Hello, everyone. Welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast Prep Baseball Talk, powered by Game Seven Baseball, Game Seven Baseball.com. We are already in fall ball, folks. Um, if you have it, if you're looking for some fall ball this uh, this fall, there you go. Some baseball this fall, I should say. Check out Game Seven Baseball.com. It starts after Labor Day. Don't have to worry about missing Labor Day or anything like that. Runs through the end of October. Got some great tournaments lined up uh, there with Game 7 Baseball. So check out uh, and get your uh, fall ball schedule ready with Game 7 Baseball at Game7Baseball.com. All right, today, as always on Prep Baseball Talk, we have the guru himself, fresh from his uh, triumphant victories in, uh, I'm getting carried away there, (laughs) but no, they were very uh, successful down at the Future Games in Atlanta. Uh, Kevin Mulder, Kevin, how you doing, buddy? I am doing well. Um, Yeah, trying to catch my breath a little bit and had a fun really fun but busy week last week um and uh had a had a successful trip last week so that uh and i wasn't able to keep up as much uh, i said that to you before we started um but wow uh undefeated um i think i, I think you even lost one last year um uh it just keeps getting better and better every year Yes. Uh, yeah. Last year we went two and one. Uh, this year we were undefeated. Um, played extremely well. Um, had a got a lot of guys kind of make names for themselves or just kind of reconfirm who they were to some of these, you know, colleges. There was over 375 uh, colleges there, and uh, you know, a lot of the guys they knew who they were. But when you're on a field playing with other like. Uh, type talented players and you stand out it, it kind of goes a long ways for you i know a lot of them have busy days yesterday with the uh the start of contact uh the period the contact period starting for them with college coaches so busy day for those guys receiving phone calls from uh a lot of the colleges that just saw them play the a couple days before you know uh last year Xander Schmidt was the MVP uh, from Missouri of the entire future games last year. This year, undefeated. Um, Kevin, you've been doing this a long time. You know, this is a progression in the state of Missouri and the level of talent. I think the talent's always been there. Is it just, are we developing, is it being developed better? What's, What's going on here? There is some development. Um, you know, we are identifying guys at a pretty good rate right now. So we're, we are, you know, it's not perfect, I would say, but we, we are getting the best players to, you know, to those events. And, um, you know, they're playing really well. I had a couple comments from uh, coaches saying, hey, yeah, you guys are one of the more fun teams to watch and one of the best put together teams down here. And the guys, and that's, that's the players, you know, they, they stepped up and did really, really well. And, um, you know, it, it's an interesting event in the fact that, uh, you know, the individual is kind of put first, we're there to showcase individuals and put them, uh, in front of those college coaches. But at the same time, and we had this talk before the event, we're representing the state of Missouri and our guys this year were the benefactors of last year's team. Last year's team was really good. Um, You mentioned the MVP. We had a number of guys, um, and when I say a number, a ton of guys move on uh, to commit to colleges. Uh, You know, you go back two years ago, uh, that team had uh, the likes of, uh, you know, Adam Hatchman and Carson Milbrandt, guys that are, you know, climbing up draft boards. Um, You know, so it, it just is kind of a reputation thing now, and, People come to watch Team Missouri, and this year they were there, and our guys did not disappoint, and our guys for next year's team will be the benefactor of that is just because people kind of get programmed, say, oh, there's a good team. Um, It's kind of like our high school stuff that we talk about, and 
good programs and you know there's teams that rise up but then there's those teams that are you're used to just always seeing there we kind of have that thing uh going for us right now we've kind of built it into that so that's a great thing up in 2019 and basically there was a void in the area I mean it, we saw that there was an opportunity to have a retail store where people could come in and actually touch and feel the tangible object that they're buying I, I think it's cool too, because, you know, as we've talked, uh, there's the junior future games as well. And so you have kids all the way down, what, I think into the 2025 class, um, they're competing, well, am I correct? The, the 25 class is the high school class that competes. Okay. Um, that's going to be juniors. The junior for future games is a 13U event, so going to be eighth graders, and then a 14U event, which is going to be freshmen, um, which is our young guys. And and that's also a lot of fun, um, had, had good teams. Um, that's done a little bit differently than the high school version. That's more play to win, um, it's certainly not at all cost. But um, you're playing the baseball game as opposed to um, it's a tournament. Showcasing. It's more of a tournament, yeah. correct? Yeah. And yeah. those are so like 26, 27s then, right? I mean, is that what I'm... 27s and 28s. Oh, wow. My goodness. So the 26s have kind of a year off. Um, gotcha. If you will. Um, now, I don't know if we'll reshuffle the deck on that with uh, the rule change. Before, like last year, we brought... Uh, a 2025 with us, which was a year early, Jordan Martin, who's now committed to Arkansas, uh, before you would bring like some of the very elite guys in that younger class. Uh, but now those guys won't be able to be committing. Um, which is a good so rule. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agreed. And, and we like that rule. I like that rule. Um, th that's a good thing. Um, I think for everybody, all parties, parents, players, colleges, I, I don't see a negative to that personally. Um, but um, it, we weren't, uh, th that rule came out in late March, April. Um, so I don't know, we, we might have a future games for that, that missing class now um, before we invited the top end of that group to, to come on board for the high school. So, and what I think is cool, and I, I, we've been, we got a couple of events left uh, for uh, Youth Baseball Midwest this this summer. Um, the uh, We're doing the Legion All-Star Game, and then uh, we're, we're, we, we've done this our third year in a row with the uh, ST, the St. Louis uh, Youth Sports Outreach Home Run Derby, the Cops versus Kids. And I'm finding this more and more. It was interesting because we have a young man coming to compete in that, Michael Wolf, that just got back yes. from the junior games uh, there. And that was, you know, we asked what's, you know, you know your best baseball mo uh, moment so far. And, uh, you know, because we're showcasing the kids just to having some fun. It's a community event. It's not for fun. It's just to have some fun. It's to support the, uh, the officers in our local communities and uh, show them we care about them a little bit. So we're having a home, we have a home run derby. It's fun, 
and we've had some great kids in the past. We got Michael Wolf there, and he said, and I and I noticed he says, uh, playing in the junior future games. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I thought, oh, okay, that's cool. I, I didn't know that about this young man. These are kids that we've been have been nominated by coaches and stuff that we've seen, uh, you know, that are coming out. So I love the co- connection of the community and the things this way. I think it's great, Kevin, that, you know, you see some of these young kids, they're, they're solid uh, in this respect. And not to mention, He's coming out just to have some fun, get in the community, support that with their families. That's what baseball should be about, right? Very cool event. Yes, absolutely. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, some of these kids that um, – because I know you go down and coach some of these uh, younger teams as well, correct? You're just running all over everywhere. I help out, yes. Uh, this year um, – I, I wisened up a little bit um, instead of trying to coach all the teams uh, and running myself on the ground. I uh, was fortunate enough. Um, we had um, Coach Brian Ash, uh, head coach at Southern, Southern Boone, Boone. Um, who uh, is the only coach in Missouri to win a state championship at three different classes. It's like the uh, – Floyd Mayweather, if you will, he's going up and down in class and just winning titles all over the place. Uh, so we, he helped us with the, he, he led the charge for our 13U and that was a great one to have with us. And then uh, Kyle Lasley, head coach at Jeff City High School. Um, he's been a part of their state championship success, had them in the final four two years ago. Um, great young high school coach. Um, in Missouri. And then of course we had, uh, Tony Perkins with us, uh, coaching the, the high school team, um, you know, four state championships. So we got guys, um, we've had coach Wilson with us from Staley high school. So we try to kind of mix and match, uh, from across the state. And, uh, I know we have a lot of great high school coaches in our state. So we try to capitalize on that and, and, uh, get them involved. And, uh, they just got such a great, um, you know, wealth of knowledge for those guys. And also just a point of reference. They, they've been around those type of players. Um, they know what those kids are going through cause they've coached guys like that and moved guys on. Uh, so it's just another sounding board, uh, for the kids and just, uh, it, it's a really cool thing. I, I, I think we've got that part nailed and, um, we've enjoyed having those guys down there to, uh, coach those kids and they've done a great job. Who are some kids that, uh, you know, kind of as you're seeing uh, that stood out uh, this week down there? I know it's kind of maybe off top, and I'm not trying to leave anybody out, but just some kids that you might have seen. Well, I will say this. Collectively, as a team, um, and I, had, I think this is probably the best future games team we've put together. Um, wow. We, we were – dynamic offensively we scored 29 runs in three uh, games and down there you'll roll innings if a a pitcher hits a certain amount of pitches so uh, we rolled innings offensively every single game we played which i we have to be the only team that had that happen um we had and, and for that to happen you can tell that that's not one player having a good weekend that is everyone uh, having big weekends. Um, so we kind of leading the charge. Uh, Leo Humbert did, <laughs> did not disappoint from Francis Howell. He had a big weekend. Uh, he hit a home run for us, um, had multiple extra base hits. Um, he, he was a star down there. Um, Caden Cloud, shortstop from Nixa High School. Um, really showed well and got on the map. Now, he was a guy that was known by some, but not all. Um, so he he really improved his stock down there. Uh, shortstop, played third base, super athletic guy. Um, did a great and, job. Uh, go ahead. And a, and a big kid. We saw him at the state championships. The first time I saw him, just a, a playing shortstop. What is he, 6'3", Kevin? Was he that tall? Yeah. Maybe a, not. a very athletic lean six two ish probably. Okay. Um he'll probably end up being six three. Uh, um <laughs> that that's you know, when you're building a baseball player, that's 
pretty much how you'd want him to look. Um, can run, hit for some power. He's got a good throwing arm. Um, just a versatile and really athletic kid. Um, not to put that comp, but so, sort of built like a Nizan Zanatello. Not quite as strong as Nizan yet, but he's a couple years younger. And I'm not pinning him and saying that that's what's going to happen to this kid by any stretch of the imagination, but that type of build, if you will. Gotcha. Um, one of the guys that improved his stock probably the most was Michael Callahan uh, from Lafayette. He he absolutely went off down there. Um, he, he actually hit one out, uh, hit a homer, and that's really not necessarily his game, but um, had multiple hits, a couple doubles, and stole 12 bases um, down there. So on multiple occasions, he stole second and third on two pitches. Um, so he did a really good job. Of course, the center fielder from Lafayette. Um, so that was exciting. Um, man, I, I mean, I'm going to leave guys. <laughs> you can almost go through Jackson Vaughn lit it up. He impressed. And, um, I, I know there's schools on him after this weekend. Um, Man, Talk Carson to, Ramos. Yeah, just kind of go down the list of the roster so folks know. I know you can't list everybody out, but who was on the roster there, Kevin? Sure. Um, well, I'll start behind the plate. We had Carson Ramos, who did a phenomenal job uh, receiving and catching. And, you know, that that's one of the premier defenders in our state behind the plate. Um, and, and Carson had, had a couple nice offensive moments as well. Big, strong kid. Um, he did a great job. Um, crew Norton catcher from Rockbridge. Uh, obviously Rockbridge was kind of in our top five, if you will, uh, most of the year, um, and was up on that varsity team crew, uh, had finished up really well, had a two hit game in our, in our third game. And that's a catcher that can swing the bat a little bit, kind of an offensive oriented catcher with a really strong throwing arm. And then Jake Greer, out of Liberty, uh, really impressed. That's an athletic catcher, big physical frame, um, kind of an interesting. Uh, then at first base, we had um, Nolan Jararski, uh, who had a had a huge spring at uh, Viani. Um, I believe led their team in average. I'd have to double check. Um, email Brian if I'm wrong about that. Um, and but. Um, he, he had a nice showing. Um, Mason Lee from Pattonville. Uh, now, he was there as a pitcher and hitter uh, and performed really well on the mound in particular. Uh, showed really well, left-handed pitcher. Um, and then on the infield, we had um, – we already talked about Caden Cloud out of Nixa, the starting shortstop there. Um we had um, Lucas Wiederholder uh, from Father Tolton Catholic. Uh, had a really nice event. I think he went three for five at the event with a handful of walks. Um, A.D. Miller, um, uh, young man out of Kansas City. He's a plus-plus runner. He ran a 6-6 six, six on the workout day. Um, played really well defensively, really strong arm, and stole some bases for us. Um Another guy that it, that's I'm sure fielded a ton of phone calls uh, yesterday, Jackson Aiken. Um, th this kid is a physical uh, infielder and um, showed extremely well at the event. Um, had some loud contact uh, at a Lee Summit West. Um, is going to be in that Power Five discussion when when he's talking to schools. And then our outfield was was loaded um that's jackson vaughn who had a, a a really nice offensive weekend we talked about leo humbert already um we talked about callahan already um and then ryan bradford um was mvp um one of the games um as well uh out of sackman can do uh, all three outfield spots and then there's one more uh rylan mills who pitched and hit um and he's out of Oran, um, Missouri, um, kind of a little bit off the radar. Not everyone kind of knew who he was, but he showed extremely well. Um, and then we won 
So they give an MVP out for every game, a player of the game, if you will. Mm -hmm. And we got all three of those. So Ryan Bradford won one, Ryland Mills won one, and Michael Callahan won one. Wow. We were firing on all cylinders. That's awesome to hear. And I'm I'm so glad for these kids because, you know, uh, Kevin, you've seen this, I'm sure. Regardless of what, you know, uh, I understand there's talent. And this is what's so tough about events like this. You know, you're talking about all these scouts. You're talking about this situation. The being able to handle that kind of pressure. Now, I know some of these kids have been in these environments to a great degree. But yet, I think, to me, when you start talking about, yes, everybody wants to show. And when you're talking about showcasing and things of that nature, and you're talking about playing a ball game with it. I love the fact, I think Coach Perkins, his attitude is always, hey, got to win the baseball game. <laughs> yes. And, and I think that shows well because when you start putting those two things together, it's one thing to go and showcase your talents, but it's another, can you apply it within a baseball game with teammates, with guys that you know you need to uh, – succeed for and I think that's the whole scope of this and when I think you can combine those two things together then you really have something special yeah absolutely absolutely and that's kind of the trick of the deal is you gotta kind of got to do both showcase your talents and then also operate as a team and um show that you're you know a, a good team player at the same time right Exactly. And, you know, when you're talking about a college coach, and I think sometimes this gets lost in all the discussion to a degree, you know, some of these high school coaches, you know, there's high school coaches that, you know, they coach and they're not going to get fired or anything like that. Okay, fine. But you get into these collegiate areas, especially power five, uh, if you're not winning or performing at that level, you lose your job. Um, Right. So these guys are coming down there with this expectation. I know it's college. I know I understand it's about, you know, education. We say these things. But when you put the spotlight that bright on this, there is that factor when these gentlemen say, hey, we want this young man to come and play for our program. There's an expectation that comes along with this. I think it's a full time job. I know that sounds strange, and I understand we think about, uh, uh, you know, scholar athletes. I agree. It's fine. But in today's day and age with athletics the way it is, I think it's a different ballgame. You're not. You're definitely not wrong about that, especially at the Division One level um, and even some of the D2s and uh, absolutely at the junior colleges that, that you're – you were expected, um, you know, to hold up your end of the bargain. And, uh, you know, at times it turns into a job. You better love baseball if you're going to go play college baseball at those levels. There are some spots where you could find a college baseball program where it's, uh, I'm going to school and baseball is kind of the fun thing um, that that I'm going to do. There are some places like that. But especially now with NIL money, and just some of the money that's in this now, it, it has turned into uh, pretty intense stuff. And, and with the transfer portal and guys hopping around, and it is, it's you have to get the job done. Uh, that that is kind of how it has turned into. Um, you know, there's certainly things that I don't love about it, uh, but they've kind of let the horse out of the barn on this, and. Um, I don't know if we're getting them back in, quite honestly. <laughs> no, I I think that's an interesting – I love what you said there because I think that's the case. And love it, hate it, whatever the case you may consider on your opinion of that, this is where it's going. And I yes. think this is the, the nature of things. When I look at baseball and when I talk about this YBM cast and youth baseball and things – there are certain things that just are at this point. You know, we say tournament baseball. We say, oh, it's killing you sport. What, what do you think like this or that? What are we doing to create opportunities that keep 
the integrity of things. And I think that's up to the adults within this, what's uh, structured at this point to make good decisions, to make the best decisions, to put our, our kids in the best uh, place and understand, okay, if this is where you're going and this is what it is, there's responsibility to these things and you have to be accountable to it. You have to understand what you're getting into. And there are freshmen after freshmen that head into some of these schools and are not prepared for it being a job. Would you agree? Oh, I a hundred percent agree. And, um, you know, your, your toughest year of college is going to be your freshman year uh, for those that go to a four-year college. Um, yeah. th- it's just a tremendous uh, adjustment in, you know, with the baseball. So you can even take sports out of it. That's just a true statement in general. Freshman year of college is your toughest year of college. It's not because of the classes are harder. They actually get harder as you go. Um, now, you're, you're taking classes as you age that – probably interest you more because that's when you get into your major and minor. But as a freshman to get this back on baseball, um, you know, you're dealing with all that and then you're trying to find your way in a new system and you're having to compete against guys that are four, sometimes five years older than you to earn a job. And they've already been through, you know, three or four years of this and uh, are bigger and stronger and more knowledgeable than you, even if you are more skilled and are better player than them you're probably not better than them today. So I think it's a, it's a lot to digest. It is, it is. And it's a big discussion. And I, and I think these are things that are interesting to me as you go through this. And these young men that are, uh, you know, that we saw just competing this weekend, I think the toughest challenge for any of these kids, and I think it's any kid coming out of uh, 14U baseball, we talk about this all the time. How are how are these coaches and where are we going here to prepare these young men to go into their freshman year of high school? Everything goes into those cycles in that same respect. And you have this 14-year-old coming out of middle school going into high school as a freshman. It's same four years. Uh, you've, you're competing. The difference is, you know, you've got a freshman team. That's the bigger – I think that's the biggest difference and probably the the best scenario in that case. But then when you go to college, you know, if you're a freshman and you're coming in, you may not be playing. You're coming into a four, you know, a 30 man roster and uh, you're you're a scholarship guy. But as you said, there are four or five guys ahead of you that may be better than you, not necessarily talent wise, but their skill level has been put in that place. And I think these are the things that are interesting as far as how we how we prepare our kids for always that next step. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in college, you might sit the bench and then get your at bats during summer ball. Um, you know, in high school, it, it is completely different because there's at most schools, um, there's kind of a farm system, if you will. There's a, a freshman team, a sophomore or JV team. And then the varsity. And so, yeah, if you're the the, the stud freshman and you get to play varsity, like an, a Nolan system, for example, then you get called up. And if you're not quite ready for that, then, then you play on the freshman team. And if you're kind of in between, then you play on the JV team. And, you know, they, they, there's a state, there's a, there's a couple different levels of their, uh, of development there for you to fall into. And uh, at college though, it's, are you in the starting lineup or in that little mix of guys that's going to help us out off the bench? And then if you're not, then, you know, maybe we're looking at red shirting you or, or possibly moving on from you. That's kind of what it is nowadays. Uh, there you go. Um, I think it's very interesting. And I, and I, and I love these conversations after, especially when you're looking at these types of events, this is the bit, these are the, these are kids that are the, the highest level. Um, you know, we, 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 we talk about this. There's so many different levels of baseball um, and opportunities for kids to play at, uh, you know, and, and it's interesting because I think a UCM who is consistently uh, in one of the top programs in the country at the Division II level, uh, I think Quincy is starting to get that. Quincy's been in the um, uh, postseason now for the last, I think, three years. Um, here in Missouri, uh, 
And you have, I think, um, Coach Ewell over at Umsel really starting to, I mean, he's he's recruiting crazy, man, over there. Um, you got uh, Maryville, who's having success. You, you have these D2 programs that are high level. And as you said, that's a, that those are schools that when you're going there, there is, you're, you're going there to compete and play at that level. And there's an expectation upon you. So if you're not developing and getting better, then they will definitely move on from you. Uh, yeah, yes, that's, um, that's what we've turned into. Um, like I said earlier, for better or worse. And, um, you know, now, nowadays, I, I think it's more, even more important to find the, the right fit for you. It's not necessarily the biggest school that calls you. Um, now you're seeing guys, um, you know, maybe you go to a Maryville or a, a, a division two school, uh, an Umsel or whatever, and you become an all conference player. And I, I don't think you should necessarily think like this on the front end. Um, but we've seen guys go out of the GLVC. That's their conference. The top players get end up in the SEC. Um, the last two pitchers of the year have ended up um, in, in SEC schools. So you're seeing quite a bit of that. It's, hey, let's go to a place where I can play. I can get on the field and you will be recognized. They will be, you will be found. And, um, you know, that, that's turned into a, a solid route for kids transfer portal <laughs> it's what it is right it is yes <laughs> hey uh, you know and and again as you said i think the you know that horse has been uh, let out of the barn and he's running pretty free right now <laughs> <laughs> well you know they they create they create the rules for uh they say student athlete wellness and protecting their rights and that's great um but what has happened with it you know so yes if, if if a kid's unhappy we want them to be able to transfer great we they'll transfer um hey a kid should be able to make money off his name image or likeness um okay great i, I get that it's a free yeah. you know free market idea and it's america sure i and i'm on board with a lot of this but the unintended consequences of this are Hey, if kids can transfer and kids can make some money off their name, then there's some strings attached with that as well. Um, and that those are the unintended consequences. And, and kids are going to uh, bounce around to schools and um, there's a different, different level of expectations that uh, come with that. Folks, we're going to... Uh... Uh, we're gonna. This is conversation. I think we're gonna have throughout the off season as we go through these things. Because I think as as we're seeing these things, uh, everything progress. I want to drill into some of this through the off season, Kevin, because I think these are conversations that need to be had. If you're if you're a parent, how do you understand the NIL stuff? Are you part of that? Where does that go to? How far does it reach? Transfer portals. All these things that are new on that level as opposed to what it you know the thinking used to be concerning recruiting right yes so i i think it's it, these are things that i uh, you know as we outline through and coming into the next season i think will be some fun conversations but uh i want to say congrats to you and the staff and and what you guys are doing over at uh, Prep Baseball Report, uh, the future games and the success you're having, Kevin. Uh, kudos to you, man. Appreciate it. And I would, I, I'd love to touch on the pitchers real quick, too. Oh, we didn't uh, get there, I, did I we? I don't want to leave those guys out because, as always, we um, – as my fault. We had some good performances on the mound as well. Um, and I'll just take you through it. It was kind of what – J.D. Dorman um, was a – absolute showstopper on Saturday for us uh, was up to 92 on the mound uh, out of Vianney. Um, we had a number of good performances. Noah Johnson out of East Prairie, um, 6'4 right-hander out of Southeast Missouri, did really well, started one of the game, 
games for us through a couple scoreless innings. Um, Camden Loman out of Fort Zumwalt North, um, extremely effective um, versus Team Michigan through two scoreless innings and uh, was into the upper 80s for us. Um, Jake Collier, the lefty out of Pacific, was our, our game one starter. Um, did a really solid job. We had uh, Ethan Rogers out of Lone Jack. There's a lefty that's definitely off the, the radar, uh, but is on it now. Um, he was an upper 80s lefty um, that had a really successful outing for us on our first game. Um, Eli Skidmore out of Francis Howell had a really good outing, showed a really good slider um, metric-wise. Uh, the schools really liked him for his high spin on his slider. Um, did a really good job. Um, Jake Thomas out of Staley um, threw a couple innings for us and showcased a really good breaking ball. Um, Tanner Graham out of Columbia Hickman, and really impressive. Had a couple scoreless innings, no hits, and two innings for us. Uh, big physical righty. Uh, Jaden Ferguson. Name that was a you know start at Viani this year through twice and uh, was some of our bigger velo was kind of 89 92 um, so it had a lot of really good performances um, on the mound as well oh Mason Lee had a, a we talked about that already um, threw a nice scoreless inning for us as well and uh, I know fielded a couple phone calls yesterday as well from schools. See, that's what happens, Lauren. I get to flapping my gums and we miss out on something. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> See, that that's what happens when you lift a horse out of the barn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pitchers or athletes? Athlete. My son would be very upset with me. <laughs> yeah, well, I wasn't going to let you forget about the pitchers. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, because uh, you were a pitcher as well. There you go. Yes got to keep that uh we're looking forward to uh you know kevin here we are um it's august 2nd that's a, that's just crazy you know how uh, where'd this where'd the season go i don't know i don't know <laughs> it, it, it just seems like we were at uh baldwin doing the kirk kirkwood uh you know um, kirkwood webster game right yeah it was like <laughs> Two weeks ago. <laughs> That's the way it feels, man. I'm not kidding. It's just wow. And uh, we're heading into August and the off season. And uh, it was a fun one, though, wasn't it? Yes, we had a ton of fun. Uh, learned a lot and got to see a lot of great baseball this summer and spring. And uh, kind of puts a cap on it. And, uh, you know, now it's... Uh, Hopefully everyone uh, gets a couple weeks of rest and recovery and maybe some weight room time for our uh, young baseball players. And then we'll start up a little fall ball come uh, early September and, uh, you know, do a month and a half or so of that. And uh, then the real off season begins. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So t let the folks know a little bit about what's coming up in the fall here. Uh, I know uh, you've got uh, some scout days and some things like that. What do you, what do you got coming up, bud? Yeah, well, I, I have a couple big things in the fall. And the biggest one is my uh, Mo Fall games uh, at Atkins Field in Columbia. That's uh, Sunday, September 10th. That's uh, kind of the premier event for us of the fall. Um, the other big event is the battle for the arch the border battle with illinois um i believe that's uh, tuesday night september 26th um we'll take a group of the top uncommitted uh seniors and a handful of juniors in there uh to compete against illinois that's always a fun night you've been over there for that um this year we're doing something new um i have i in the past i've gone around to a lot of different JUCOs and done scout days with them. This year we're doing that September 2nd, Friday at Maryville. There We're going to have four or five of them all together and do a workout there, which is going to be, they're going to still work out individually, but it'll give uh, some schools a chance to get out and see them. 
um, and we're doing it all in one spot. So that's uh, those are the the big ticket items of my fall. And then I have some individual scout days as well with different organizations. Well, if if you have us, I'd love to do. I love doing that battle of the arch. I think that one's fun. Uh, love to come out and uh, stream that. That's that's a, that's a fun event. I think that's that's fun because you got Illinois. You got that same thing. You know, we're going to be out at Bush Stadium with the all the Legion All Stars, Missouri versus Illinois. I think that's you know gets a little of the blood flowing. It, yeah, yeah, it does. That's over at GCS Ballpark over there in Illinois, and that's always a fun night. Yeah, anytime we get to play Missouri and Illinois versus each other, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kevin Mulder, folks. Kevin, as always, I appreciate your time. Uh, again, congrats on the success of the future games. Um, to all the folks, I know you got a lot of people. It's not just you. You got a lot of people involved with this. But, you know, uh, I think the job you're doing, it's, it, you know, and we've been talking like this for uh, what, it's a couple of years now, right? Yes. Jeez. There you go. And every year it just seems to get better and better. And uh, the events are getting better. The, I, and like I said, the talent level, everything. So kudos to you, man. I appreciate it, Brian. Absolutely. Folks, thanks for tuning in. We do appreciate it. If you like what we're doing, please, while you're here, hit the subscribe button. That's what happened. And I'm glad you could still hear Kevin. I, I think we he froze on the video side of it. I but. noticed that. Yeah, about 10 <laughs> minutes ago, I froze. And I was worried. I'm like, oh, am I going to go out? And I'm like, oh, just keep going with it. Yeah, absolutely. So don't worry about that, that stuff. But Kevin, um, again, check that out. Uh, follow Kevin Mulder, uh, Prep Baseball Report on Instagram and uh twitter well, it's x now right it's not twitter it's x gotta follow him on x and yeah. instagram uh you can so. exactly at uh pbr underscore molder and at pbr missouri so do that again hit the dinger next to the subscribe button that gets you all your notifications for upcoming episodes because that's what we do around here we had dingers. And just an FYI, folks, uh, we got a bunch of this coming up right now. I did a lot of interviews. We were at the state championships for the Missouri American Legion. I got interviews with uh, Sam Pauley, Tyler Bizzle, uh, Ian Brown. Uh, we got some Nate Moore, uh, Josh Hagel. I'll tell you, there's a kid, Kevin. Um, he's undersized, uh, but I saw him playing for Sedalia. He's at a, he plays, uh, he's Nob Nostra High School off the beaten path, right? Yeah. Um, Josh Hagel, uh, tremendous athlete. You know, he's going to, he should play probably a, at a division two school. I mean, just a, just a really good shortstop and, uh, saw some high level plays from him, that young man as well. Pitched, hit the ball all over the park. Um, there's a young man that's kind of off the beaten path. He was a, he's a junior going to be a senior at Nob Noster. So he's a kid that, uh, Hopefully we'll see some uh, because he's he's well worth the price of admission. He's a player. But that's all I got to say there. Um, thanks for tuning in, folks. All you pitchers. Kevin? Keep throwing strikes. There you go. Hitters, hit some bombs. And uh, we'll see you all next time.